Those are more, more often used in um, the more advanced normal forms. Transitive dependency is when you've got that same kind of dependency, but the two attributes are not, they're not like keys. So, um, you know, you might have a zip code, and the zip code's not the key, but the zip code points to the city, state, and county, etc. And then you have multi-value dependency, which, to be honest with you, I think it's e would be easier for me to show you than explain it to you. So let's talk about normal forms. Um, all of you remember repeating fields? Okay. So essentially, when you're talking about normal forms, is that any multi-valued attribute and multi-valued would be like a repeating field. Um, they've been removed. And in every row and in every field, there's one value. Some, some theorists call this an atomic value, which means that if you're looking at row 27 and the name field, you're only going to find one name there. You're not going to find more than one. Um, and it's not moving. So this is an example of data with and without repeating. The chart at the top, you notice that for employee ID 100, there are two values for course title. And in the bottom chart, they're not. So data on the bottom has now had repeating groups removed. Um, that's really all there is to first normal form. There's nothing magical about it. Um, any questions? Okay. Second normal form, and just so you're aware, when you go in normal forms, anytime you're going up, it always implies that whatever you're working with has already passed the previous set of, of standards. So when you're talking about second normal form, it's already in first normal form, and all non-key values are dependent on the primary key or, or candidate key. Um, so let's talk about partial functional dependencies. I know there's a lot of terms. Let's say that you've got a table and you have two values that uniquely identify your table, the row in your table. And you have another piece of information, another attribute that's linked to only one of them. Well, that can cause problems. That's what they call a partial functional dependency. Um, and when you put it into second normal form, you take that and you break it apart. Can you give an I'm going to do that right okay. now. So this is, a, this is a, a, an example. This is, of course, using the same employee chart. And down at the bottom, there's a chart of the functional dependencies. And in this case, in, in order to know what the completion date is, you have to know the employee and the course type. But however, for the rest of the information about that employee, you only need to know their ID. So in this case, there's a functional dependency here that in this case involves two values, and in the other case involves one. So, and you also notice that as you're following from where the functional dependencies start to end, they're all going the same direction. That's not important now, but it will be important a little later. I'll show you how it works. So the general rule here is that when you have functional dependencies and you want to split them into multiple tables, you just take, take the groups and you break them up, just like that. So when you break this up into two tables, you end up with something that looks like this. Now you have your employee data separated from your, from your uh, course information. And the functional dependencies have been taken from one table and divided into two. And, the, and um, these tables are now in what's considered second normal form. I see some crinkled eyebrows. Questions? Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. I, I'm not quite getting the distinction between first normal form and second normal form. <coughs> well, 
In first normal form, you're removing repeating groups. You'll notice that for, for every employee ID, there's only one value in every column. Yes, and that's also true in second normal form. Yes. So what's different about second normal form? The difference is that if we go back to how it was before, if we go back to how it was before, there are, there are relationships between groups of data. In other words, the, the employee ID tells you the name, the department, and their salary. But there's also this other piece of information in here that is not just related to the employee, but it's also related to the course. So you have to split them apart. Now, I understand that you might look at this and say, well, I would never look at data like this. But the assumption here with data normalization is that you may not always get from your customer, they may, you know, they may show you a spreadsheet, they may give you a list of information, it might not always be clean. And when you're talking about it with them, they might not always split things out. They're going to, they might just dump out to you a list of information and they expect you to organize it. So what normalization shows us how to do is how to organize all of this information into logical groups. So when you split it up like this, now you have the employee information separate from the course information. And of course, in this case, you, you could link those tables by the employee ID. It would also be true that this is another thing that, um, that you know, talks about what normalization does. If you were to remove, let's say, let's find, if you were to remove employee 140, okay, because um, he was no longer taking the tax accounting course, what would happen to George Jetson's information? So, the other purpose of normalization is to prevent when you remove data, you know that you're removing only the data you want. In this case, what you would, what you would really do if you wanted to remove George Jetson from that class is you would remove it here. But that would still leave his information on top. And when you have situations like that, that's what in normalization theory they call data anomalies. Insertion anomalies, just adding a record, deletion or changing, so that you know that when you take an action to change something or add or remove something, that you're not losing information. Very important. So let's talk about third normal form. Third normal form is something that's in second normal form and where there are no transitive dependencies. Transitive dependencies are when you have relationships between data that, data that are not key values. In other words, remember, a key value is something that uniquely identifies a record in a table. So, but if you have values inside that, that record that are related to each other, but not related to the key, then you're talking about it, what they call a transitive dependency. So, in this case, you have a customer, and this is, this is you know, sales information here. So you have a customer, and You've got their name and who their salesperson is and who their region is. But it also, you can always derive the region from the salesperson because you have a salesperson, and there could be many, that are assigned to a particular region. So if you know the salesperson, you know the region. So you don't need to have both of those bits of information in the table. So the way that you do it, again, let me, let me just go back here and reiterate. Remember what I mentioned before, follow the, the, the line of direction. So you take these and you stop. Because that's a unique set. And then you take this and you separate that out into another table because the salesperson tells you what the region is. So when you see how the tables are split out, Now you have the table of salespeople, and you have the table of sales. 